Hey, I'm Nikki and welcome to my fourth video. This time around we're going to be making the castle bag from Disorderly Threads. And I know some people have requested a tutorial for this bag, so I decided to do this one next. Um, the link to the design is below this video, along with um, the whole Etsy shop and the Facebook page of Disorderly Threads. And you will really like all their designs. Um, I've made probably about a dozen of them so far, so I like them a lot. Anyhow, let's get started. Uh, first, you will need to put some cutaway stabilizer into your 5x7 or larger embroidery hoop. You will also need fabric for the main part of the bag. And um, I chose a cotton with some little gold um, stripes in it. You will need a lining fabric. You will also need some felt and um, you'll need some tan and then whatever color you choose for these little turrets here. And I prefer to use a wool blend felt because I find that it wears better than the cheap acrylic stuff that you find in the craft store. And this is hard to find locally, at least in my area. So um, I buy mine on Etsy. There are a lot of sellers on there who have it. You will also need to have a zipper that is at least seven inches long. And you will need some low loft batting. Low loft means thin. You'll also need a piece of ribbon for the top loop. And that can range from a half inch up to an inch wide. And mine is seven eighths of an inch and I'm using grow grain. I find grow grain wears better than satin ribbon. And grow grain, in case you don't know, um, refers to a ribbon that has this little rib texture to it. For the zipper pull that comes with the design as well, it's a little crown, you will need another piece of felt and um, some ribbon that is about an eighth of an inch wide. And finally, you will also need a piece of tearaway stabilizer and that's toward the end of the design and I'll explain that later. So let's get started. Let's put our hoop on the machine. And we're gonna run the first stitch, which is the placement line for the zipper. Now we need to remove our hoop. And we are going to tape our zipper right in between these two placement lines. We'll center the zipper and we need to have the zipper pull facing up and to the left. And it's also important to make sure that your tape is right at the edge of the zipper and not too far in to avoid the needle, um, the needle going through it because that'll gum up your needle and give you problems. And there's that step. Next, we will need to turn the hoop over to the back side. Take our uh, medium sized piece of lining. And we've just taped this to the back. Then we turn it back over to the front. Take that same size piece of fabric for the outside. And all of the dimensions and supplies that you need are listed in the PDF instructions that come with the design. And the instructions themselves are really good, but um, I got permission from the designer to make these videos because um, I know a lot of people are really intimidated by in the hoop embroidery and find that having someone show them how to do it is a lot easier. And some people just learn a little bit differently than others and benefit more from from learning in a visual manner. So anyhow, now that we've got this all taped together, we are going to make sure all of our fabrics are up and out of the way. Slide the, the hoop under the machine again, into the machine, and we're going to stitch our second stitch. Take this off the machine again, and you will now want to remove the tape that's underneath your stitch. 
And next, you want to grab your medium-sized piece of batting, the square one. You need to lay it inside the hoop. Pull the fabric down and over it. Leave this lining piece up here where it is. And actually, what I find helpful is to pin it to the stabilizer that's hanging off the edge. And then I don't have to worry about it falling into, in, in the way of the stitching. Okay, so we want to put some pins down to make sure this fabric doesn't shift. Um, it's good to put pins on the sides and then two at the bottom and put them as closely as possible to the edge of the hoop so that your needle does not hit them. Okay, so now we've stitched um, the little wall and brick outlines and our next step are the little flags. And I'm just going to use the same color of purple because I like it, but in the instructions it tells you to switch to a new color. Okay, now that we've stitched the flags, I am going to cut my jump stitches. And that's something um, I should have mentioned with the previous step. Um, you, um, during the fifth step, you're, you're going to want to um, stop periodically and cut the jump threads because when the foot glides across the design, it can get caught on those. Um, so just um, make sure you cl clip those as you go along. So our next step is going to be the placement line for the, the little uh, roof turret pieces. And for these, the reason we're using felt is because there's no satin stitch around the edge. So if you were to use, um, say, a cotton or any type of fabric that can unravel, um, it'll eventually completely fray and unravel. And not look very nice. So we want a fabric like felt that does not fray. Okay, I'm just going to cut my jump threads. And then take each of these pieces of felt and put them over the little roof pieces and make sure that the felt completely covers those placement stitches. And another thing that's important is on the right side, put a little piece of tape along the left side of the, the felt so that when the presser foot glides over, it doesn't accidentally push the felt out of the way. It just glides right over it. So we have um, stitched the satin outline around the door, which um, I'm again having technical problems with my with my camera here. Um, apparently, it cut off after ten minutes, unbeknownst to me. And anyhow, um, so that that um, I did a satin stitch around the door, and um, what I wanted to tell you is that. Um, although I'm using felt for that step, um, let me take this out and show you. You don't have to because of that satin stitch. So you can use um, a cotton if you chose to, since the satin stitch will prevent it from fraying. Um, I just chose the, um, the felt because I like the color that I had and I like that it matches with the, it's the same color as the, uh, the roof pieces. Now our next step is going to be some satin stitching around these window pieces, or these windows. So I'm going to change to a lighter color, this light purple, to do that step. Okay, so I just finished stitching the satin stitches around all the little windows. And the next step is um, to turn it over and fold down this lining fabric since we are all done with the stitches on the bottom portion. So just fold it down, 
pull it tight and then secure it with some tape. Just like that. Then we are going to take our piece of um, fabric for the front and we are going to tape it down so that the top edge is even with the top edge of the zipper and we're going to tape that down. Just like that. Then on the back side, we're going to do the same thing with our same size piece of lining fabric, right along that stitching line there. And there we go. Now we're ready to put it back on the machine and it's going to stitch all those pieces together and secure our zipper. All right, so then we need to remove that tape. And if you put tape on the back side and the main area, you want to remove that at this time as well, otherwise you'll end up stitching through it when you do your embroidery on the top. I put my tape on the sides of the hoop so I don't have to worry about that. You want to take your small piece of batting, lay it in the hoop, then fold this, this piece of fabric up and over it, and pin that in place. And again, you want to make sure those pins are as close as possible to the edge of the hoop so that your needle does not hit them. All right, and our next step is some decorative stitching on what will become a window up here. Okay, so I have changed my thread color and I am currently doing a satin stitch around that window that we just did the decorative stitching on. Okay, now that we've gotten that, the next step is the detail here with the bricks and the top of the roof. So now we're going to trim off this little thread here. Then we're going to flip it over to the back, untape this lining piece, and fold it up. And we're going to pull that nice and tight and tape it in place right here. Or if you want, you can undo the pins in the front and repin them catching this fabric on the back. Now back to the front. This is very important. Open your zipper so that when you're finished with the project you can actually get the bag turned up right side out. Then we're going to take our piece of ribbon, fold it in half, take a piece of tape, and we are going to carefully center it in our design and tape it down. And we're making sure that the edges of our ribbon are well outside of this top stitching right here. So we make sure that it gets caught in the seam. I'm actually going to move mine up a little bit just to be on the safe side. Just like that. Then, we need to take our back piece, lay it down in the hoop, center it, then our large piece of batting, and then our piece of tearaway stabilizer that I referred to earlier. This is so that your presser foot does not get caught in this batting. Now there's some batting, um, like cotton batting, that's more densely um, constructed. 
and your presser foot may not get caught in that. And if you have that type of batting, you probably don't need this step. Um, but it certainly doesn't hurt and um, stabilizer is pretty cheap. So, And we're going to pin all this together so nothing shifts while we are stitching. And see I like to put three pins on, one at the bottom, one at the top, and then one in the center. And we're going to make sure everything's all smooth in the back. We're going to put this back on our machine and do our next stitch. Okay, we're going to remove our hoop from the machine one more time. And um, you can take the pin out from the middle, um, then turn it over. We're going to take our large lining piece, and center it over the back, and tape it down. And it goes back in our machine for one last stitch. This last step goes almost completely around the design. It leaves a little opening at the bottom so you can turn it. All right, we're finished stitching. And next we want to remove our pins and remove our design from the hoop. And now we can remove our tearaway stabilizer. And then we want to remove all the pins that we put in during construction. Okay, now our next step is to cut around the edges of our finished bag. Now to do this, you are going to want a very sharp scissors. I use, um, this is a Ginger brand scissors. Um, it's, a, it's for sewing. Um, so your, your kitchen scissors, your craft scissors are probably not going to cut it because um, we have to cut through multiple layers of fabric and stabilizer and then in addition we need to get into all these little corners so that when it turns um, the shape is, is how it's supposed to be and it doesn't look all goofy. And then when we cut we are going to leave about three quarters of an inch at the bottom here so that we can flip that to the inside and stitch that. All right, and we're gonna cut about an eighth of an inch from the stitching. Then across the corners, we're gonna go diagonally like that. So we wanna get rid of as much bulk as possible so it turns real nice and cleanly. So we're just going around all these curves. Cutting off the excess zipper. Now, as you can see, there are all these little curves, and you're just going to go right to the edge and just clip, and be very careful not to clip your stitching. Anywhere it curves, just do a couple little clips there. And then again, when you have a corner, you're just going to cut diagonally across it. There, we're just going to continue around doing that same thing, going across our corners, but not cutting through our stitching, and then these 
spots up at top are really tricky because it's a very tight space and you have to be really careful not to cut through the stitching, but you have to cut really far up in there. I don't know if you can see, but it's really, really close. If you don't, it, um, it doesn't look very good when you turn it. All right, so you get the idea. We're just gonna do the, the same thing for the rest of the design. Okay, so now we've stitched all the way around. We're going to peel back the two pieces of lining fabric and cut the rest of this off. And now we are ready to turn it. Then once you've got it turned right side out, you will want to stitch this little opening shut. And in some of my, my videos, I recommend using steam -a seam um, to close this up because I don't know about you, but I don't really like hand sewing very much. But since I used a wool blend felt, um, that would melt if I put an iron on it. So with this one, um, I'll have to hand sew it shut. And then for the zipper right here, um, I did it earlier and I had a camera issue, but um, you will want to cut off the cutaway stabilizer that was in this area. And once you've done that, you just turn it right side out. And you are all set, you have a finished bag. All right, we're about to do the final step, which is the little crown shaped zipper pull. I've loaded the design into the machine, and since I'm using a small piece of felt, I am going to actually do the first step twice. So it's going to be a placement stitch and then a tack down all in one. Okay, so now I've got that placement stitch, I know where to set my felt. So I just need to back up one step on my machine and I just lay the felt right on the hoop, make sure the felt is covering that entire placement stitch and we're just going to redo step one again. Now if you've done a felty before, this is the same concept, only we're adding a ribbon loop. So gives you another uh, way to use those felty designs that you might have. You can uh, make them into zipper pulls. Okay, we now need to remove our hoop from the machine. And we need our second piece of felt, which is right here. We're going to flip, flip our hoop over. And first we need to tape down our ribbon loop. So the edges of the ribbon need to be inside of that outline. Tape that down, then put the felt over the outline stitch. Tape it down, just like this. Then it just goes back on the hoop and we do the second stitch. And that's it. We can take our hoop out and remove our project from it and then we can tear away our stabilizer and this is what we have so the next step is to cut along the 
stitching, but we want to make sure we don't cut off our ribbon by accident. So how I do that is I just cut the two layers separately on the side that I have the ribbon. So I just separate them, hold the ribbon out of the way, and cut the felt on this side. Then I do the exact same thing on the other side. There. And then you can finish cutting around the rest of the design. You can cut both layers at the same time now. And there we go. We have a zipper pull. And you just take the end of the ribbon with the loop, put it through the little hole in the zipper. It takes me a minute, so I'm not going to do it right now. And then pull that through, loop this through, and it's attached. So there we go. We made our castle zipper bag. And if you like the video, I would appreciate it if you click the little thumbs up underneath. And in addition, I love reading your comments. And it also is wonderful if you could subscribe as well. Let me know if you like the video and what you'd like to see in the future. And I will see you soon. Thanks.